Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura. And I need a bag to carry my big binder in. Because a lot of times I have loose things that fall out. So, I'm going to take a pattern that's made for a quilt and turn this quilt pattern into a bag pattern. And because it has big beautiful butterflies on it, I'm going to be working with this beautiful pearl shiny fabric. So the butterfly is going to have that beautiful pearl essence. So I really thought that this pearl fabric with that little shine in it would be perfect for making butterflies. The fabric line is from Benartex and it's called Cotton Shot Pearl. So I do have a bundle of fat quarters so I'm going to really mix up this bag and make it very colorful and very pretty. The pattern is called Butterfly Blossom. So all of these butterflies are appliqued on this quilt. So I really did like that butterfly shape. So I'm going to use the template shapes and make that butterfly, but I'm not making the quilt. The quilt's definitely on my list to do, but for now, I'm just going to make the bag. And that bag is going to fit my big binder. So I'll need to take these butterfly shapes and transfer them to my fabric. I will be using a lightweight fusible web. So this is a product which is like a glue on one side, which is that shiny side, and paper on the other. So I was able to trace through this paper side up all of those pattern pieces that I need. If you're going to do both sides of the bag, you will need double, but I'm only going to do one butterfly on the one side. So I only need to use these pieces once. Now we need to decide what we're going to do for the bag. I need two bag outsides and two bag insides, plus handles and the butterfly. And I think I'm going to have my butterfly sitting on this very soft yellow. And that way any of these colors will really show up well on this fabric. So I'm going to do one side of the bag, a second side of the bag, and just for some fun, the inside of the bag or the lining, I'm going to use these two different pearl grays. And to make the butterfly wings, I'm going to make them out of purple, and I'm going to give him a turquoise body. So the first thing I need to do is get his wings and his body ready. So I will need to press my fabric then I can take those shapes that I drew out on that fusible web, cut out the shapes, and then you're going to be able to fuse them on the back of the fabric. Now these will end up being reversed, but because it's a butterfly, we both have a left and right wing, so we're going to be fine. So I'm going to do the two top wings, one purple, and the two bottom wings, a second purple. And then I'm going to follow the heating directions and make sure that I fuse them on my fabric with the right heating directions. Depending on what fusible web you use, the heating directions can vary. So for the bag, we're going to need four pieces of fabric, two for the inside lining and two for the outside. We need to cut these so they are 17 inches by 15 inches. So we'll have a seam at the bottom and a seam at the side. So if you have a directional fabric, keep that in mind. For the piece that I'm going to put the applique on, what I do like to do is I like to draw that measurement out before I cut it. Because sometimes the fabric will shift when we do machine applique. So I have that 17 inches by 15 inches. I need to mark the bottom of the bag at an inch and a half. Now I don't need to do a full line I just need to put a mark because I do want to find the area where I'm going to put that applique. And sometimes just putting the ruler there is all I'm going to need. I'm also going to need an inch and a half on each side. So this area inside is where I want to put my applique. We need to consider that we do have that top of the bag and we're going to need a little bit of a seam allowance. 
we can either find that center or just eyeball it and put our butterfly on. So we already have that fusible stuck on the fabric. It's cooled down, so the glue is stuck on that fabric side. Now cut out those pieces right along the line that you traced. So I have the body piece. I could put on those top wings and the bottom wings. So I have the butterfly flying in one direction. I can put it in the center. By just having the rulers there, you can sort of play with this and do what you'd like with it. Once you decide where you're going to put them, peel off that paper, follow the directions, and fuse him down. Once that little butterfly has been fused on, you're going to be able to go to the machine and do some kind of an applique stitch. Now that our butterfly is all appliqued on, we're going to be able to check that measurement and make sure that it's 17 inches by 15 inches. And I do want to cut all of those pieces exactly the same size. I did use four fat quarters so I do have a piece of fabric left over from the top. And it's going to equal approximately six inches. The size is not that important, but what we're going to do is make a pocket for the back side of the bag. And it won't matter what fabrics you use. I will be taking the two lightest ones, match up so that the right sides are together, I already have one side squared, so I'm just going to straighten the other edge and then stitch all the way down so we're making this tube. The size really isn't important. Just maximize whatever fabric you have. So I have that tube, turn it right side out and press. Just press a quarter inch so that back fabric is showing to the front. So I'm going to have a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. I'm going to stitch on that background fabric. And really where you put it is a personal choice. I don't want it too close to the top because the handle will be there. So somewhere in the center. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a row of top stitch right along that edge. So I have that top row stitched down. That's just going to hold those layers together. And for myself, I've chosen four and a half inches to come down. Pin, stitch along the bottom, and stitch along the sides. So I have a very long pocket, and I'm going to divide this up. The measurement you're going to use is the measurement that you want. You can divide it in half so you have two pockets, or divide it so that you can have three pockets. So now I have the one side of the bag done and the side with the applique done. For the lining, we can do the same thing with this little leftover piece of fabric so we have some inside pockets. And now I have three inside pockets. We can now put these four pieces aside and make some handles. And the handles? are going to go from those fat quarters that we made the butterfly from. And just for contrast, I'm going to use the blue. To make the handles, I'm going to use that long side of the fat quarter, which equals about 22 inches, and I'm going to cut two strips at four inches. The size is not that important at this time. I just need those two strips at four and a half inches. To make the handles, we're going to take this, fold it in half, and press. Once that first pressing is done, we're going to take and put those raw edges right along that fold line, press the one side, press the other, and then we're going to be able to just fold that in half so all of those raw edges are tucked inside. Once those are all pressed in, do a row of stitching along each side. So we've turned that four inches into a one inch handle. So these are going to be your handles. So we do need them to be the same size 
and straight edges. If you want only a small handle, we're going to be able to trim it down. If not, I just like to use what is there. Now that the pieces of the bag are ready to put together, we need to do some kind of a stabilizer. Binders can be heavy and it will be good to strengthen that fabric. I'm just going to put a fusible interfacing. This particular one is a medium weight and it has an adhesive on it. So I'm going to take the back of both of those front pieces and iron on the stabilizer. We'll need to trim off any of that interfacing or any fabric sticking out. Now we're going to cut off corner pieces so that we can make the bottom flat. But I like to do mine all in one step. So I have the front of the bag, the bag with the pockets, this is up, and these would be going together. I'm also going to line up my two lining pieces. So I have the top, the top, right sides facing, the top and the top of the lining, right sides facing. Now draw a corner on those two bottom pieces at an inch and a half. And a good pair of scissors will go through those four layers. And while I have my layers together, I'm going to pin those two linings together and then I can pin these pieces. I will only need to pin the bottom of the bag because I'm going to do a treatment before I do the sides. Do a quarter inch seam allowance right along this seam. Once that seam is done, open it up and open that seam and press it flat. Once that seam is pressed open, take another piece of fusible interfacing and we're going to want it the three inches or whatever this size is and we're going to fuse that down. That little piece of interfacing really does make a big difference. The bag is going to sit flat on the bottom and have these sides come in. So it is a good time to press it now. We want to press right along that area. So we're going to press right by that fold, press that, and then we're going to do the sides. So we're going to press here and press them in. So we're going to have two presses on each side and the bottom pressed in. When it's pressed, you can see already how well it's going to want to take that shape. That's going to save us from pressing it when all of the sewing is done. Now that that pressing is done, let's add on the handles. Find the middle of the top, then I want to put these straps on two and a half inches over and pin that down. Keep that strap straight and two and a half inches from the second side. We can now go to the machine and just stitch those handles on and then place our right sides together and sew a quarter inch along those sides. With that pressed, we now can match up those corners and stitch a quarter inch. And that's going to close off that front of the bag. Now let's work on the lining. For the lining, we need to do that quarter inch on both sides, but for the bottom, we're going to leave an opening. So stitch about two inches on each side, and that's going to give us a big enough space to pull that bag through. Pressing is done. Now we can go in, match up the corners, and do that quarter inch seam. Turn this right side out, and it's going to fit inside of this bag. Match up that top, and stitch all the way around at a quarter inch seam allowance. And now pull that bag out. And tuck the lining inside. Two things to finish the bag off. Make sure that that lining and bag are smooth along the top and do a row of top stitch. And then we're going to be able to close that bottom off. And to close off the bottom of the bag, I just matched those seams and did a little row of stitching. The bag is now complete. So the bag fits my binder and 
I can get a second one in. Look how nice those two binders fit inside. Now, if you don't want to use it for binders, I'm sure you can think of a lot of things to put in here. You can also make the quilt and put the quilt inside of the bag. Or make the bag, give a kit and put the kit inside the bag. That pre-pressing really does make a big difference on the shape of that bag. A little extra interfacing doesn't hurt anything either. So this tote bag with the pockets on the outside and pockets in the inside definitely is a lot of fun to make. There are so many different possibilities that we can make with just this one butterfly template. Never mind the quilt. The bag is a lot of fun on its own. And of course, you can always make the quilt and put it inside the bag. It fits my binders perfect, and I'm sure I'll find a lot of other good things to put in it as well. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and I do have a newsletter all under So Very Easy. I'll put some links in the description. I'll also link to this pattern so you can make yourself the tote bag. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.